Welcome back to the Constitutionals Podcast. I'm your host, Chad White. If you didn't know, this is the premiere podcast for the website, cpluscomedy.com. Like I just said, it's a website. Go there. Very late recording. Or very early, depending on what you say. This is uh, behind the scenes before work. <laughs> I'm about to, I'm uh, 40 minutes away from driving to work. 40? That's a too late. That'd be too late. I will get there later. I am going to work in half an hour. So that means I need to finish this in 20 minutes. Uh, let's get to it. This is a Constitutionalist Podcast. This is a show where I, Chad White, the president, whatever, the guy, the only person that does anything at cpluscomedy.com. And <laughs> what was I saying? Uh, that's it. I just talk and sometimes think good things come out. But other times bad things come out. Most of the time bad things come out. I went to the Braves game for the first time. I went to the Sun Trust Stadium for the first time. I'd always, I'd been to the Battery since they opened up this brand new area in Cobb County <laughs> in, in Georgia. They'll call it Atlanta. It's definitely still Cobb County. Uh, and I've, I, so I've, I've been to the Battery, been to the restaurants and bars there, but I've never been to the stadium. Went inside the stadium. It's nice. Seats are a little too close for my comfort. And uh, watched the game. Had a good time. One, <laughs> one of the biggest issues, though is that I went to this game, and there's this thing. I don't stand for the national anthem or any of that stuff anymore uh, because, you know, people that look like me are going to be uh, little targets. Uh, <laughs> very true. <laughs> kind of a joke, kind of true. Um, but I, I just I just don't stand for it anymore, and I didn't stand for – I missed the national anthem because we were late to the game, but I didn't stand for God Bless America, which is sung for some reason in the sixth inning, I believe it was, they sang that song. I don't know. They probably got out of singing a song. And uh, and so I, I didn't stand. And this guy next to me, he's, he sits down. He goes, are you Muslim? And, you know, obviously I have the accent. I'm not I'm not hyping up the accent. That's exactly what I said. He goes, are you Muslim? And I go, no. Because I knew, I knew he was going to go with this. Because I knew, because the people behind us were talking, you know, Trump this, Trump that. They were ec- ecstatic about that stuff. And they referred to people who live in Miami as the Spanish. So... Uh, we know that's let me. That's what Cow County is. That's 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 what a lot of Georgia is. But that's what Cow County is. That's where. That's why the that's why the stadium is there for these rich white people, so they can uh, just keep out the riffraff, the coloreds, <laughs> who were who were hanging out uh, at uh, Turner Field, you know, in that area, uh, which is in Atlanta, which is where the actual stadium should be. So this guy sits down. And he goes, "Are you Muslim? You didn't stand for it." And he called it. And this is what he said. Uh, so if this is written down, I would say sick, as I see, and put it in uh, brackets, the national anthem. And I went, no, he goes. And, and then I, I don't know. So he, he like he kept talking and uh, I just said, I'm not a fan. He goes, well, you know, it's your choice. And he turns back to watch the game. And then like he and his little uh, uh, redneck friends were over there. Like, I can't believe it's not standing for it. It, it truly doesn't matter. I mean, with everything going on in this world, you think that one person not standing for God bless America. I, okay. All right. You know what? I believe in, in, uh, in religion and all that stuff. Let's get this, this stuff. <laughs> Let's get this stuff out of our sports. Let's just make sports about sports. All right. You don't, you don't want me doing uh, political movements during sports that don't bring uh, religion into sports anyway so i've been thinking about that for the past uh several hours it's been really pissing me off drove me through my workout uh and if you don't see an issue with that if you don't see an issue with what that guy said then uh, you're truly uh, just as bad as he is <laughs> and you can say well you're not think you gotta he people fought for your right to live here it truly sincerely it, like i also fought for my right to to get shot on the street you know, any hoosers, enough of that. I only have one topic. I didn't think I, I didn't, I didn't prepare anything for last week, uh, which is not the reason why this is coming late. So this is coming late because uh, I am, if you do, if this is 113 episodes in, I keep mentioning this. I'm insane and I need, I need no one to be around when I record these things. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's it's very funny that, you know, eventually I'm going to have to uh, to, you know, if it, you know, 
if Seafull's Comet was ever big and, and News Time was, you know, a multi person production, I would always I would have to do this in front of people. But uh, as it stands right now, since it's just <laughs> since it's like forty people, not even that. Since it's like ten people watching one video every ten videos, then uh, then I then I I allow myself to be this way. And again, there's just louder people out there who are doing dumber things, and they're getting recognized for it. And I just don't think I should be loud for nothing at the moment right now. So there we go. Uh, HBO canceled Vice News tonight. Very sad to see that show go. Uh, this is Vice was in an upheaval of digital television. They were doing so well with uh, the Vice proper on HBO and News Tonight. You know, was reaching close to a thousand episodes. I think a thousand, right? Because it's been on for a couple of years. Uh, but anyway, this is um, this is HBO basically saying the seven year relationship partnership with vice is over with this comes from uh the uh hollywood reporter written by natalie jarvie my good friend that's not funny it's not funny every time i say something like that it's not funny then we also have josh tyrangiel is leaving i don't know let's see what he let's see what his uh he was the architect of the show so he was the news chief there oh so he's leaving vice he's not just leaving hbo he's leaving vice wow uh and this is what he said in his memo to the staff he said after this is like four years of harrow quote harrowing challenges and huge highs with the company, well, which I completely understand. Vice is like I said, upheaval of digital, you know, media. Uh, even though they're they're putting out this a lot of good work with video, they're also not doing too hot with the written portion of the website. They close a bunch of sister websites. And then, and then now this, <laughs> this is like I, I can only assume that Vice News Tonight was getting in the hundreds of thousands of viewers, and that's not good. Like if if that was I don't know an episode of Barry, I you know HBO would be like fine. You know if it was eight hundred thousand viewers, nine hundred thousand viewers, HBO would let it slide because it's Barry and it's very niche, but critical, but critics love it. But you know if you're doing a nightly show, and it's it's highly produced and you're sending, you're paying for all these people to go out into the world, uh, literally all around the world and do these stories, these, uh, sh- short bite sized stories. Then you kind of want some, you want, you want to get something back from it. So four years, they probably are getting five, 600,000 viewers a night. They do that show four nights a week. Plus vice proper, uh, one on Fridays. You know, it just probably wasn't doing uh, well for them. And then, on top of that, in Vice's camp, we have them. Vice Land's not doing too well. Uh, they, <laughs> this is what I see as an issue. They mostly just write about weed and prostitution. <laughs> everything I see about Vice is everything I see from Vice is weed or prostitution. I they they should be able to branch out <laughs> and maybe do some real news reporting, <laughs> like they did on Vice News tonight. <laughs> Uh, I do. No one, I no one knows what this means for the Vice TV show, the regular Vice TV show that's that really put them on the map. You know, their magazine or whatever that did, that did wonders for them. But the Vice TV show, I think, is something is the pinnacle of what they of what is what they're able to do is because they're able to take these stories and dive into them, you know. And then two years straight, they do instead of doing like the regular episode order of what twelve or fifteen. Or twenty that they did, they did one year. They did thirty nine. Another year they did forty something. So I think they did forty something. We can check. We have, <laughs> we have it right here. Uh, HBO has been an exclusive home for Vice News, a relationship that has at times proved fraught for both companies. Uh, which is true. With the end of Vice News tonight, Vice is expected to look to further growth. It's grow its news brand with both domestic and international partners. Uh, Nancy Dubik wrote a memo. Importantly, uh, who's this Angelo character? Yeah, I see this Angelo character. Jesse Angelo. Oh, okay. Jesse Angelo. He's the former chairman and CEO of the New York Post. He is going to start working at Vice as news, television, and digital. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> 
Jesse Angelo's role is, uh, from, uh, per Nancy Dubik, importantly, his role it will really bring to life our ambitions to expand our Vice News Global footprint. So Vice News Tonight is going to come to an end in September. And that's when the HBO deal is up. But Vice is said to be shopping a daily news show, that's not Vice News Tonight, obviously, to other networks and platforms and is expe- expected to announce a home for the show in coming weeks. Meanwhile, the company is at work on a new centric show for Hulu that has yet to be announced. You know, New York Times, I talked about this last week, has a show with FX in partnership with FX and Hulu that is coming out day and date on, you know, both platforms. One's a network, one is a digital network. One's a traditional network, one's a digital network. And, uh, sorry. <laughs> and I really, th- I think that it would be, in the, and, and the show is great, the weekly, you know, it's just, it's uh, taking, again, taking one story from, uh, that's, that was produced by, or written by, uh, written and produced by two, one or two New York Times writers, co- correspondents or contributors, whatever, whatever you want to call them. And they are, um, they are, they, they are then tasked, you know, telling that entire story of a course of half an hour, um, which is what we've seen before. You know, this is not a new platform, not a new way of storytelling in media. Uh, I think it would be in the best interest for Vice to just drop this daily news show wherever they're going to shop it. Who would pick it up? That because you know HBO was the pinnacle of their the of of it is it is the pinnacle of television. It's it, and that's the highest height the Vice is probably ever going to reach. And I don't want to I don't want to taunt them. I want to tease them. That's truly that's the, like like I would have done everything in my power to keep uh, an agreement with HBO going at this point. Um, like what they could have done is something that that New York Times was do- is doing with FX and Hulu. You know, air on FX, air their show on FX, and then uh, at midnight you can watch on Hulu. Um, that's I think that would that would be something that would be beneficial for uh, for HBO's offering of Vice News or uh, Vice News Tonight and for the uh, Vice TV show. Because I, I, I think News Tonight was a really good show, except for when they had, you know, like a music critic talking about today's pop pop music. Of course he's not going to like this music. He's, he's an uppity little narcissist butthole. <laughs> It'd be so jarring to, like, to, to see a story about rape in Ghana, you know, rape and murder in Ghana and uh, blood diamonds, and then to all of a sudden jump to this, and now... Uh, look at this uh, hipster white dude wearing pink sunglasses indoors and a bandana tied around a hat. Listen to him talk about uh, how Billie Eilish isn't good. It <laughs> it doesn't make sense for me. it doesn't make sense for me. Uh, let's keep going. I have nothing else to talk about, so let's see if I can do this for another seven minutes. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so yeah, so here's, this is what, this is also an article, but despite attracting a young audience of over 500,000 viewers per episode, you know, see, according to data from Nielsen and winning five news and documentary Emmys in three years, the show has struggled to break out of the crowded landscape of Trump era TV news. It's buzziest moment came with its 2017 coverage of the Unite the Rally in Charlottesville, Virginia. Yeah. Cause they were able to get, uh, on the ground in Charlottesville. I definitely remember that definitely remember that because they have a lot of stuff on Charlottesville I think they have a documentary they have I think they have like a, a feature length documentary on Charlottesville I don't don't quote me on that I think they do though. Uh, then they talk about the leadership changes that happen at both HBO and uh, Vice uh, of, of course I'm going to mention this again Vice as you know was uh, perceived as a boys club because it is and <laughs> it very much is and uh, you know run by these uh, uh, hipster rich white dudes um, who were sexually harassing women. <laughs> so uh, they had to be changed. And they changed. Boy, oh boy, did they change. HBO has already decided not to renew weekly show Vice. All and a daily news show began to make less sense for the network and to double down on drama and comedy series under its new leadership. Wow. That's, so that really, so their partnership really is over. I did not know that. 
The ending of the show offered an opportunity for Tyrangiel to take a step back. He will remain with the company through the end of June and then transition into a consulting role through the remainder of Vice News tonight's run. So basically by September he'll be out. That's crazy. So regular Vice is canceled. Huh. Man. I really like that show. I just I I do like the work they do. They just they just focus on one thing too much. It's just weed. You know, talk about weed all the time. You need to legalize it. There's only so many ways you can say that. Man. Uh, Dubik has been putting Mark, her Mark, advice in recent months, laying off 10% of the staff in February in an effort to reduce costs and put the company on a path to profitability. I wonder if this is an inner response to Vice now being officially owned by Disney. <laughs> HBO, HBO's uh, parent company, AT&T, they went up to Plepler. Oh, he's not working there. They went to Greenblatt and he's like, mm, no more. Bob Greenblatt. Good guy. Rich white dude. As they all are. Vice's current news executives will continue to oversee operations with Tyrangiel's departure. They include producers Madeline Herringer and Sabrata D, who will lead the development of Vice News TV shows and Vice News editors in chief Ryan McCarthy. Tarangio's direct reports will now report to Angelo, as will Viceland General Manager Guy Slattery and newly hired Chief Digital Officer Corey Hake. Hmm. Wow. So we'll see what happens with Vice in the coming years. You know, obviously, uh, HBO and HBO, Disney devalued them. They, they... The HBO Disney Disney when when they when they bought Fox, uh, the the billions of dollars that H, that Vice the the amount that Vice was was uh, valued at uh, decreased a lot because Disney needed to write off some money because they still got to pay back debts for Fox. Speaking of debts, Dark Phoenix is apparently a debt. I'll still see it. I don't care. At some point. That's the only superhero movies I watch. The X-Men ones. Everything else is just too much of a, a back and forth. All these worlds are bidding. The build the Vice is very I, I like I mean, let's, let's let me go to their website right now. I want to see what's what's on their website right now. I haven't been to Vice in a minute. And you know, I like noisy. You know, I, I like everything that they do. Ooh, Jesus. Ugh. This is ta- ooh, boy, the pictures aren't even up yet. <laughs> Oh no, this is too much. This is way too much for me. There's a new Taylor Swift song, of course. I'm not going to listen to it until the entire uh, album is out. Okay, so they really did get rid of the verticals. So now they have just Vice, Vice News, Vice Land, ID, and Broadly. Then they have all of these sections. It's news, tech, music, food, healthy, money, drugs, <laughs> plus more. You know, it's games. What are you talking about video games for? Oh, yeah, Waypoint. Don't do that. Don't don't go to Vice for video games. I understand that they need to broaden their... That any company, is it's smart for them to broaden their, their scopes and reaches and stuff. But, uh, you know, at some point, it's... It just doesn't... It just doesn't work the way that they do it. They want it to work. Uh, I think I might be done. That's 18, right? That's 18 minutes. Let's go two more or one more. Well, it takes me 90 minutes to wrap up usually. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, I guess if you want to listen to the show. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right, anyway, let's just uh, listen. If you like what you heard here, why don't you head on over to the website, Uh I swear to God, it's going to be updated at some point. <laughs> Everything's on YouTube <laughs> and podcast right now. Uh, head on over to the website. You can see, you can listen to the entire collection of uh, this show, as well as see all the videos of this show. That's where they're collected. Or you can go to the, watch the videos on youtube.com slash comedy, And you can see every, every single episode of this podcast, with the exception of the first 59. <laughs> so everything from episode 60 on the way up to, this is episode 113, which is very crazy, which is very stupid to hear. Yeah, it's been two years. Because 52 plus 52 is 104. 
Wow, I didn't do the uh Huh, the anniversary was a couple weeks ago. <laughs> I did a hundred episode special, but I didn't do an anniversary episode. What was episode one hundred and four? Uh, I still have it on here. It was, I wish I was kidding. Okay, I don't remember the episode. I remember that title though. Listen, if you like, we're here. <laughs> YouTube dot com slash people's comedy. See all the videos. Well, sixty on up to one twelve or one thirteen. You can also see the premiere show, which is uh, news time, which is I love doing. I I, I say I hate it, but I love doing. I actually got. Uh, you may notice that the GoPro, if you're watching the video version of this show, I pray you are, the GoPro is at a different angle today. I got a new tripod, uh, a new, it's got good legs. It's like the the other one I had was like 20 bucks. Horrible. This one is, was a nice, cool $60. Uh, it's got, it has a phone clamp on it. It's got uh removable ball head so I could put on my camera or wherever the heck that thing's called. I could adjust everything with one hand. It's, it's, it's the best Monfroto. Manfroto. Yeah, I got the box right here. It's good. 61 inches. <laughs> Compact. Action. Smart. It's got everything I need. I also bought a uh, a gimbal. A uh, DJI um, Osmo Mobile 2. I should not have spent that much money. The amount of money I spent at Best Buy. I should not have done that. But here we are. <laughs> I did that, and so I spent uh, close to two hundred dollars on this stuff. But you know what? It's gonna help me. Uh, the the I just, I was I was saying this to myself, and I promise I'll hang up in a second. I was saying this to myself earlier <laughs> that uh, when I got that when I got that tripod, it's just easier to shoot news time. It's just easier to to shoot the things I want to shoot because I'm not because with with the with the crappy tripod I had before. Uh, it was the legs were coming apart, uh, screws were popping out, and everything like all the rubber, this poor metal, like really bad aluminum. It just everything was falling off, falling apart. You know, the past you know four years that I had it, and I've been used, and I've been doing this show for six years. So, you know, for so for two years it was fine, and then four years straight, it's just bad. Not this show. I've been doing this show for six years, uh, but now I have this this great tripod and. I I pulled it out and and then it was up and running in like 15 seconds. It was crazy. The other one takes me minutes to set up. This one's 15 seconds. All I gotta do is pop the camera on there and I'm good. Uh, so now all I gotta do is get a new camera <laughs> and and then get a better microphone, <laughs> learn how to edit better, <laughs> and then everything will look good. And then I'll finally get the recognition I deserve. Hundreds of views. <laughs> all right. Listen, if you like what you're here, do all that stuff. Uh, this week's news time, I have not done it yet, but I've, I have not shot it. I've written it. Uh, it's, and haven't needed to edit. It's about, uh, Patreon. It's about how, uh, people give money to these Patreons, uh, how Patreon is kind of an unsustainable, unsustainable business as it stands, but they are doing the best crowd for crowdfunding. Uh, and there's no, you know, cheaters so far. Uh, so yeah, I get, look forward to that later on tonight at the end where this episode is going to load up to. Hopefully we'll be back on a regular schedule at some point, but uh, I don't think that'll come until I can move them to my own apartment. Thank you so much for listening. I appreciate it. I love you. Thank you. Bye.